favor, what everyone loves to talk about. So I figured, why not? That's a question I get asked the most. People ask me all the time, what kind of gear to use and why? So today I'm gonna give an in-depth preview and I'm gonna discuss each piece of gear, what I use in my personal project, Kindred Guardians, and why. Before we do that, say a quick little pom-pom. She's really enthusiastic, so stay tuned to see the gear I use. Guys, before we dive into this, first I'm gonna make a little switch here. I'm gonna get out of like my city non-working hat and I'm gonna get into the, the mode here, into my character. The character is just who I am, but anyways, this is my city hat. I get made fun of for it a lot. People think I wear a lot of hats because I'm trying to hide that I'm bald. I'm not trying to hide the fact that I'm bald. I'm bald, I'm comfortable with it. I hope you are too. Anyway, this is my sort of in the field hat. Um, this is to protect me from the sun. I don't think I look cool. I realize I look like a complete, complete idiot. I realize I look like a tourist on vacation in a safari. But anyways, this blocks the sun. Hopefully it protects me from skin cancer. So what do we have all here? This is all my gear. We're going to start here with sort of the less sexy stuff. I'm going to move straight into sexy stuff over here. A um, little background about this kit. So this is my kit for my personal project, Kindred Guardians. My project is, is documenting people around the world that dedicate their lives to helping animals. Uh, it's been, I've been doing it for about a year on lockdown right now. Hope to continue it for about another year, then publish a book, and then keep going with it. It's my passion project. I love this project. It's kind of who I am as a photographer. So this is my kit as a wildlife photojournalist. As you can see, I wear many hats in my photography, but this is my uh, focus right now in my career, and this is what I'm working on, and this is my kit when I'm doing those kind of shoots. So, some of you know me as a Canon photographer, and you've seen me on Canon Photo Faceoff uh, his on History Channel for about five years. I was the host of that show uh, for a long time. I did a lot of work with Canon, uh, give a lot of talks with Canon, and I recently stopped working with them because I wanted to make a switch in my career to, to a different kit. I wanted to try something unique. I still, I still have a Canon camera. I still use it from time to time, but this is essentially my new kit, not just for my personal project, but I also use it for my assignment work as well. I've taken this exact kit here, maybe minus a couple things, but I've taken this exact kit here with me on assignments for the Smithsonian Magazine to Myanmar for a story on elephant coloring. I also took it to central Vietnam for a travel story for the New York Times. So this is my new kit. This is what I travel with, this is it. And so a lot of people might, the first thing you might notice here is, is wait a minute, where are the big lenses? Where are the um, autofocus, the giant cameras? Listen, that, I'm not a wildlife photographer, I'm a wildlife photojournalist. So I'm looking to get close to the people I'm photographing, looking to get close to the animals I'm photographing, always in an ethical way. But this is the kind of kit that allows me to get close and, and the kit that forces me to get close. So let's get into it. First, we will start with um, a couple, couple things here, a couple sponsor notes. Many of you might have seen that I do some work with Leica. Leica has published a lot of my stories. They've been very, uh, very helpful in getting my work out there. They've been very supportive, but I, I'm not a, a Leica ambassador or anything like that. I paid for all these cameras, unfortunately. They broke the bank, but they, they're very supportive of my work, especially Leica Vietnam with loaning me equipment from time to time. Leica Singapore as well, let me test out stuff and feature my work, but in no way is any of this stuff sponsored. I purchased it all myself and I purchased it because I wanted to buy it. Why did I switch to Leica? Uh, like I mentioned a little bit before, but yeah, another thing is, is I, I wanted a kit specifically for this project. I wanted to change my photography. I wanted to start, uh, new, I wanted to start fresh a little bit. So, I talk fast and I get out of breath because I'm fat. <laughs> but, okay, let's get into it first here. We're gonna start with, uh, this here's uh, my Woven Craft backpack here. I have it as background decoration, but I love this backpack. I do work with Woten Craft. They are a sponsor. Of, uh, they do sponsor me. They give me free bags, but I like their stuff even before. I reached out to them first. So, this is a wax canvas bag. They handcrafted. They make the, all their camera bags from big to small out of, uh, uh, out of Taiwan. Really cool company, cool guys, great craftsmanship, great bags. I use this specific backpack on all my shoots to carry. Sometimes I carry lenses in the side pocket here if I just go with a light kit and a camera around my back and I carry a rain jacket here, another set of clothes or another, another layers, but love this backpack. I use this backpack in conjunction with this bag. This is a Billingham bag. Uh, I love their bags, love their look kind of matches the safari look, but I love that, that khaki color they have. Uh, they're very, very durable. They, th this one's brand new, so it hasn't broken in yet, but you'll see when you break them in, it takes time. You gotta kind of like crunch them up and 
do a lot of this kind of stuff, but then they really have that broken in canvas look and they become really gorgeous. So I'll show you one day when this is broken in, hopefully soon, hopefully when I'm released back into the wild and able to take pictures again. So that's my Billingham bag. This stuff all fits in here. These are my boots. Boots are important, bag's gonna fall. Boots are really important. I have two of them, I'll just show you one. But rugged boots, these are Timberland boots. I take these everywhere because I'm in mud, I'm in dirt, I'm in uh, uh, rhino poop. I've stepped in rhino poop in these. They don't smell. I've cleaned them thoroughly. But these have been in rhino poop, they've been in dog piss, they've been in gibbon poop, gibbon pee, basically all the animals I've photographed so far in my project. Pee and poop, they've been in it, I've been in it. So this is that. Rugged boots are important. So now on that note, talking about bad smells and such, I get stinky on some of my shoots. I sweat a lot, I move around a lot, I'm rolling on the ground a lot, so I always carry deodorant. That goes on, you know how that works. I carry a cologne, this is pretty sexy stuff. Velvet Haze by Byredo. It's pretty fancy, but oh, I really love this smell. So if you walk by me in the airport and you notice I smell pretty good, it's because of this stuff right here. It's really for other people because I feel gross, like sort of being around other people all the time and I smell bad. I'm in long car rides on a plane or going directly from a, a, a shoot or in the field to the airport and things like that. So this comes in handy quite a bit. Um, notebook, notebook, extremely important. I am a photojournalist, so I do need to take really good, really good captions, good notes. Uh, I write a lot of things down in here, uh, blog ideas that I have. Um, questions that I want to ask my subjects, uh, a lot of things like that. I do a lot of interviews with this, so notebook is essential. Oops. I've got this little plastic bag, heavy reins. Uh, I just carry it with me, a little Ziploc bag. I use this for little stuff if I want to throw these in or if I'm in a situation where I, I need to sort of keep stuff waterproof. There you go. <sighs> what else here? Um, I use these little G drives for storage. I take two of these with me everywhere. Everywhere I go, every single day, I back everything up on two memory card, on, on two hard drives, and on my uh, my laptop as well. And if I have a good internet connection, I upload stuff to Dropbox as well. Every single day, at least two backups, three, sometimes four. Last thing you want to do is ever lose your stuff. So these are uh, SSD drives. They're super fast. They're really small. Uh, really portable, love them, so by G-Drive. I will put a link to all this equipment. If you have questions later on, you can ask, uh, I'll put, uh, but I'll put a link to all the gear for people that want to know where do you buy it from and how much does it cost and blah, 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 all that stuff. So before we get to the other, uh, to the, the guts of this, the camera stuff, uh, I use Leica binoculars. This, it does start to sound like a Leica commercial here. I love their little binoculars here. They gave me a great deal on a used pair at uh, Leica Vietnam, but these are great for when I'm in the field, I want to spot, oh, there's a gibbon over there, let me look, or there's, oh, there's an elephant, well, should probably be able to see an elephant without these, they're quite big, but anyways, I love these, they're portable, they fit in my pocket or fit in a bag here, but they're very, very nice. Extra batteries, um, ear pods, you know, long drives, um, long plane rides, I listen to podcasts, I like Adam Carolla podcasts, I like the New York Times Daily podcast, I like football podcasts, Bill Simmons, Ryan Russell, all that stuff. Uh, okay. A little like a memory card holder, boom. Everything with Leica is pretty, pretty cool looking. So these are, I keep my little memory cards in here. GoPros, uh, I'm not, I don't have one of the GoPros here, but I'm getting into vlogging. As you can see right here, I do a lot of vlogging. Well, I'm starting to do a lot of vlogging. I just got a brand new kit, a Hero, Hero 8. It has sort of the hyper smooth, not sort of, it has the hyper smooth um, uh, steady system built in, stabilizing system built in. So it's really cool for carrying around. I have a little uh, shorty stick that comes with it. I bought the whole media mod, so I can attach a Rode microphone to it. I'll show a picture of that kit right here or right here. I haven't decided yet. I'll decide that in post. But uh, that's what I'm filming on right now. I love this little kit. It's been amazing. I also have a backup uh, GoPro Hero 5 that I have over there. Um, little, this thing is GoPro chest strap. It goes here. This is great for when I'm shooting. And I, I don't like to film doing video and doing stills at the same time. I really feel like I miss stuff like... You know, I was photographing a rhino surgery, pretty intense, and I can't be switching back and forth. I really need to stay in the same headspace and think just about still. So this is great for attachment. I have one for my head as well. So I attach the GoPro and I can get a little B-roll behind the scenes or that kind of stuff of what I'm filming for stuff like this vlog. So now the sort of interesting stuff, the camera equipment. Um, here, this is my longest lens, which is kind of sad for, for a guy that shoots animals, but again, I get close. This is a 135, it's from like the 1970s, like a lens here. I use this every once in a while, just when I can't get exactly as close to the animals I need to get. I have this 21, I'm using this less on my project and more on my travel stories. It's just a nice wide lens that I can have. It's really, really sharp edge to edge, tiny little lens for a 21 millimeter. F4, it's fine, I shoot out in the F3.4, sorry. But I just got this, dig this lens quite, a, I like it a lot. Any time I need a scene setter, that's a great lens to have. Another little piece of gear I picked up right here is a Leica L Pro, which is this little thing attaches to all my lenses here and makes them, instantly makes them a macro lens. 
great when I want to get close to the animals, you know, that close eye shot or close shot of the hands. It's kind of a game changer for me. I just got this and I'm excited to take it with me. I haven't used it much yet, but excited. I wish I knew about this when I first bought this Leica system. Here is, uh, let's see, that's my favorite camera, but I'll show this one. This is a Leica M10. I bought this used from Leica Singapore. They don't call it used, they call it Leica Preloved. How cool is that? So this camera has a screen, unlike this camera. Leica's, uh, um, they're simple cameras. Everything on this is manual. Uh, very minimalistic, you know, I dial in my ISO, I've got my shutter speed, I've got my aperture, boom, that's it, turn it on. Got a little screen to preview, that's it. Absolutely love this camera, I got a 75 attached to here, I use this for some portraits of my subjects. But now that sort of the guts of this operation, or the meat of this operation, I'm a vegetarian, I'm a vegan actually, I don't know why I said the meat of this operation, the tofu of this operation, this is my, my go-to camera for everything. And this is the kind of camera that makes people mad. This is the kind of camera that people yell at me. How can you spend $8,000 on a camera without what? Without a screen. It's a digital camera without a screen. It's the Leica M10D. Uh, I absolutely fell in love with this camera when I took it around Singapore for a couple days just shooting street stuff, but I love it. It made me go back to, to my, the beginning of photography when I would slow down, when I would shoot film. I never processed my own film, so I don't want to sound like a phony, but I used to shoot film and have it processed, and I like that. Uh, I like that sort of, you know, going going back to your hotel room or going back to your apartment or wherever, and and looking at the images, kind of seeing what you got. And I feel very comfortable with you know shooting manual. I feel comfortable with my exposures. So you know, I, I use that every once in a while when I really need it, when I'm doing a cover shoot and I need to look at the screen just to make sure I got it. But I always got it with this. That that's insurance, but I did get it. But that's at large insurance. I've got this lens cap on here. I wanted to show this because I never use lens caps. I just hit the GoPro and it bounced back at me. But I don't use lens caps. They slow me down. I use lens covers and protective filters. But this is attached to my favorite lens ever in all camera systems. It's a 35 millimeter. This is the 35 uh, 1.4 Summulux lens from Leica. It is amazing. I use this probably 80 to 90% of all the shots you see in my project come from this lens right here. So. Yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about this camera, um, enough amazing things about this switch to Leica, how, you know, how much it has made me slow down, how much it has made me think more in my photography. You, I'm sure I've got a million comments about the features and all that stuff. I don't need all those features. I get the images that I need to get with this, and this is the right tool for me. I understand a lot of people like a lot of features, gadgets, whatever. That it, it, I don't need it. I've realized I don't need it as I've gotten older, and this camera has been perfect. The system has been perfect, and I am a Leica M person through and through from here on in. So another thing I'll add is these little Anton, 19, uh, Anton uh, Barton, Barton 1972 straps. They're kind of these uh, um, leather braided straps. I really dig them. They're tiny. They roll up pretty easily. They have a cool look to them. So that is my kit. Thanks for listening to me rant on about this. This is all my stuff. I don't think I missed anything. Maybe I did. Uh, I talk about the flashlight. Yeah, I use it to see things in the dark. <laughs> I've got my little Kindred Guardians business cards. Forgot to put my Instagram on there like a stupid idiot. I think I talked about everything else, but if I missed anything, whatever, I'll, I'll add it in the comment section. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section. Thank you for checking this out.